So the thing about carburetor nuts is they should be tight. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, Carter BBD stuff. When we last left this humongous pile of classic automotive excellence, uh, we found some stuff. Yeah, that shouldn't look like that. It should look like that. So that's a problem. This BBD also leaks from everywhere. So that's not good either. Save that. It's original. They're only original once you know. Any hoozle, we're gonna rebuild this guy cause he's original and he's got the manual choke stuff. And we're gonna grab whichever base plate out of these two looks the least bad and hope it all works out. Now, you can apply what I'm gonna do here to many carburetors. Many of them are very much like this. The Carter BBD in particular is, well, easy mode. They're like the simplest thing in the universe to take apart and reassemble. Especially this manual choke unit, cause it's kind of missing some stuff. Neat. The accelerator pump, which also leaks, lives in there. Here's the arm for it. One flathead screw, one clip down here pops the linkage off. Yeah, whatever, it's in there somewhere. I'm covering myself with gas. Did I mention drain it first? Drain it first. So much for those pants. Ooh, there's some orange in there. This screw, like the carburetor mounting hardware, was loose. That's a problem. Do need to pop this choke linkage apart as well. Just uh, that clip should be sufficient. It's not the size of the air cleaner stud. It's the motion of the oil bath. Oh yeah, side note. Later BBDs have a big thingy here that houses a bull vent and hides the accelerator pump stuff. And it's really annoying. Also the vent and the accelerator pump movement are adjustable and it's really annoying. This one, that's what you want. Anyway, on all of these, there are six screws. Four here and two full length that go all the way to the base plate. Then there are two from the bottom that complete the mounting of the base plate. Now, among carburetors, the Carter BBD is just about my favorite. In fact, the smaller BBS, also just about my favorite. If you've got a slant six and you're tired of throwing away Holly 1920s, get yourself a BBS. The single greatest thing about this design, shared by some carburetors, like I think Stromberg's the same. Anyway, need one seat right there. So if it ever sticks, you just clean it, and put it back in or replace it without even removing the top plate. It's so easy. If you remove the air cleaner gasket, <coughs> easier said than done with one hand, it reveals these little cutouts your screwdriver will stick through for those long screws. Oh yeah, here's your bull vent. If you're gonna start one of these and you got no fuel pop or it's been sitting for a hundred years, dribble gas down that till the bowl's full. You could do this on really any carburetor because every carburetor has a bull vent. Let's say you're in the field. You need to do this and you don't have a carburetor kit with fresh gaskets uh, handy. How do you get it apart without ruining that? Tap it with a screwdriver a few times. Usually while holding this, it comes right apart. Yeah, that's pro level there. Just saying. Well, here we are in the meat of this thing and we've got some stuff. Just a few chunks, that's fine. That wasn't an important part that fell out. It was that. Your accelerator pump lives here. When you put this thing back together, that's gotta go in first. Don't lose the spring off it, that's important. And after the top plate goes back on, reinstall this guy. Or um, you'll wish you had. The BBD, much like the larger AFB and AVS series, uses a vacuum piston thingy here, and needles that slide into the jets to change the fueling. Well, these ones don't, they're lock solid. I've actually never seen that before. So that's cool. Nothing a screwdriver handle can't fix. Aha! See, pro level. And here's what the piston assembly looks like when it's not stuck in the carburetor. We'll make sure to clean where it lives really well. This is its return spring with a gasket jammed in it for some reason. <sighs> that doesn't belong there. More on that later. Now. There are two metal pieces in here, which you need. Don't take these out and leave them on the table when you reassemble it. There's this shieldy thingy and this hold down strap for the floats. And yes, that was experience talking. 
They leave them out almost every time. Now we can remove the float assembly. Cute. That's all bad. Oh, hey, note, check ball for the accelerator pump. If you turn this thing over, that'll fall out. If you're tearing into your carburetor at all, it may well be because you have a flooding problem. If you have a flooding problem, the needle and seat is your most likely culprit. The next most likely culprit, sunk floats. Make sure they're not full of gas. These ones are just full of, hang on a second, uh, gas. Well, that's not what I'm in here to do, but uh, I guess I'm replacing these floats. You can submerge them in liquid and watch for bubbles. That's one option. Uh, but, you know, sloshing noises are a pretty good indicator there's something wrong. Here is the booster assembly. Honestly, I usually don't even take these out. But it's worth checking. The main jets are still down in there. I don't take those out either. I'll give them a quick spray and everything will be fine. Oh, hey, another check ball. That should be the discharge. Yeah, it's got to be the discharge for the pump. That one will fall out too. See? On the BBD, your discharge nozzle is these two tiny pathetic holes. Lovely. Yeah, so... That's cool. And now we'll take out these two last screws for the base plate. Note, they are slightly longer than the top plate screws. Don't mess that up. And here's our old base plate. Sad. It was actually bushed at some point, which is funny because the bushing's wearing out too. They always have, like, play in there. There's just nothing you can do about it, really. Of course, the one I'm going to replace it with, probably worse. And there we go. A pile of pieces, good and bad. If you missed any of that, or dropped something important, fear not. Your rebuild kit comes with a diagram. Unless you grab the wrong rebuild kit, in which case it comes with the wrong diagram. Another reason I'm happy to get rid of the space plate, these idle mixture screws are ruined. <laughs> Super fun story time. The first carburetor I ever rebuilt was a BBD just like this, actually. Cleaned it up all nice, used the diagram, put it together right-ish, put it on the car, fired it up, and with the choke on, it idled great. Awesome. I was so young I couldn't even drive, so I just shut it off and called it a day. Later I found out it didn't idle once it was warm. It would not idle. That's because there are different versions of this lower gasket. And if you use the wrong one, you'll have no idle circuits. And that's a problem. So, when you're assembling this, your kit is going to come with a couple different gaskets, and you need to make sure you've got the right one. Make sure all of the holes have holes. Oh yeah, this accommodates a different version of this carb too. That's fine. And that doesn't go anywhere, so it's not a vacuum leak. But, you know, all the important stuff is there. Which reminds me, I'm going to have to look really closely at my replacement to make sure all the holes are the same. But I can't do much more without the correct carburetor kit, so that's tomorrow Jamie's problem. All right, you just stay there, you big, beautiful hunk of excellence. Cougar! Oh, it's so good. Cool stuff. You ever built a carburetor rebuild kit out of two carburetor rebuild kits and a bunch of random stuff you found in a pile? After careful consideration, I've decided the new one is same enough, and the gasket agrees. So that's good. Now that it's dried overnight, you can see this is just sand. So that's special. And here's what the next 20 minutes of this operation look like. Making everything pretty and less sandy. But first, pizza. Did I say 20 minutes? What I meant was two and a half hours, but you know, this is an OE grade deal and it needs to look really good. And it looks uh, pretty good. Well, it's not really OE, it's supposed to be gold and the crappy paint that was on there came off, so now it's silver, but it looks good. The parts carb gave up these. Nice, guess what it was missing though? That piece I always leave out. At least I'm not the only one. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly. And don't forget the two check balls. Shiny. The full level on the original float and on the new one was way off. The trick on this is to hold this retainer, which you should have reinstalled, and flip it upside down. And then you can use the little measuring thingy they give you to verify that. Pro tip though, the float should sit level, basically. 
In fact, you can see mine's still a little low. It's really close on the measurement, but uh, Edelbrocks are the same. Flip them, you look, and then they're like level. It's kind of the trick. Hollies are a little different, and uh, they got a screw. But the rest of these that you set mechanically, make them look straight. That's it. So fixed. Two more important components. Boop. And this guy, which I've just remembered I need to soak in gas first. Yes. Let those other ones soak for a bit. If your pump discharge does this, you probably did it right. If you left out either of those balls, uh, not so much. Steady. And it's restored. Boop. I installed these two to hold the base plate on, but don't actually tighten them until you get the long two in there too. And then, you know, evenly, crisscross, whatever. Glap gas is becoming a common feature. It's beautiful, but there's something missing. Yes. And that's how you make a regular old Plumbus. I mean, Carter BBD. Wow, looks way too nice. Now we get to um, tune it all over again. Yay! Commence self back padding. Runs good. And that's how you rebuild a Carter BBD. My eyeball on the idle speed was totally wrong, so I did have to turn that down. And now I'll repeat the procedure where I turn the idle screws in by half turns until it starts to stumble, bring them back to where it's smooth, making sure they match side to side, of course, and then back them out another half turn. Call it good. Thanks for watching. And remember, there's no crying in baseball. Now I just have to do a full tune-up. Good thing I got it hot oh. first. But first, pizza. Um.